Hi, today I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the uh, Array Solar Tracker controller. This is how it is look like. You can see it on eBay or somewhere else. Uh, this is an internal. Uh, as you can see, we have a Wi-Fi here, and it is very important if you have a lot of controllers uh, on the fields and want to get the logs and analyze them and make some kind of decisions. And uh, if you are building solar tracker, you can use DC motors in here and you can control the amperage and the temperature and everything is important to make sure that the construction is working well. And uh, if you want to build a pretty big construction and want to use something else like DC motors, AC motors, uh, DC motors with 25 uh, amper or maybe more whatever you, you want to use you can use external motor model external connector in here uh, also with pwm signal so you can even control pretty big uh, edge bridges from here um, i'm gonna tell you today about uh, the, the the motors who mostly use it in trackers and tell you a little bit more why should you use this or that? Of course, it all depends on you. Uh, in most cases, you are building uh, trackers using this kind of solutions. Um, okay, it's pretty cool, but uh, first of all, make sure that this is big enough and strong enough uh, to manage your installation. If you're using more than eight panels on the tracker, don't use this because uh, the wind will break it for sure. Uh, if you want to build something bigger, then you can use bigger construction and even you can use uh, AC motor 20 to 230 or maybe 110 uh, volts, it depends in which country you are living in and uh, for sure our solar tracker can control it. Uh, I'm gonna show you some example how can, can, it, it, can, can it be done. But remember, if you are building a solar tracker up to 20 panels and your motor is using more than, let's say, 5 amperes, you have to think about the construction, you have to think about the uh, motors and how the, uh, the warm gearboxes are working, because it possibly it's too big. Uh, I don't think so if the tracker should take more than 2 amperes. We have a big construction with 20 panels and uh, from the log analysis we see that it is getting about 1.5 amperes. So uh, if you build something and uh, want a big, big motors, then okay, use it and uh, our solar tracker controller can deal with it, but I'm sure that you can do it better. Uh, what about this? It looks like something from a car or something and in most people do not understand that this is not because it looks like like from uh, windscreen uh, wipers uh, mechanism it doesn't have to be. It might be pretty big motor uh, with uh, pretty nice uh, reducer in here so uh, don't look just around just read the documentation what kind of device you are you want to use if it is really windscreen possibly it will be not good enough uh, the most important reason is that this is too small they have some kind of plastic uh, gearboxes in here uh, and it used 12 volts if you are using more volts mostly use 24 volts because it's pretty safe and you're reducing uh, the, the current uh, consumption. A current is uh, a big problem when you're thinking about electronics. Uh, it's generating the heat and, and hazard. So mostly use 24 volts and mostly use 1 to 30 gearboxes. If you have here 30 round per minute, then it is possible to use it in the future. In some cases, people are just founding something on the stock, like a uh, uh, reducer uh, from uh, steering wheels. Well, 
it looks good, but in reality it's also 12 volts and it's not prepared for what you want to use for. So just found the good gearboxes, found a good uh, uh, motor reducer. And the reason why it doesn't have to be so strong as you can imagine, that this place, this, this shaft will be not used straight to manage your tracker. Of course you have to use some kind of gearbox and of course it will be too fast to be connected straight to, to the construction. That, then you have to use two or even uh, one or two uh, uh, warm reducer. Warm reducer is pretty nice because uh, it has some kind of self, uh, self uh, locking. So uh, you don't have to use any special brakes on the, on the, on the motor. Just use it, and if you have a, a reducer and you have a, a, this kind of gearbox, then, then for sure it will be not possible to to move the construction from that side, from the from the side of uh, outside, from outside. Yeah, uh, so uh, so this is good enough. Of course, you can use pretty stronger devices and connect it to to to, to, to two or three reducer, but three is too much. You have to use maximum two reducer. So if you were you you were found some kind of this uh, motor reducer, then you have a one reduction in here with a more uh, with the gearbox uh, warm uh, reducer, and here you can just use one of them. Uh, R V fifty uh, dimension will be pretty nice for up to twenty trackers, uh, twenty panels on the tracker. Uh, if you really need something bigger, then you can use this kind of reducer, and you have AC. Uh, motor and it's pretty okay. We can manage it uh, uh, using uh, inverters, so you can just uh, reduce and maximize uh, the speed of the of the of the tracker. This is pretty nice solution. Um, and uh, if you want to think about using this kind of uh, reducer, it's too big. Uh, it's it's too small reduction, so it's pretty fast, and you don't have to use it straight. Uh, because the, the speed of, of, of the shaft will be too big, so the tracker will be too fast and uh, will be not so accurate. If you want to use a, uh, the, the bigger reducer, just use something like that, then you have a two reducer and the motor, and then you are easily uh, will manage the speed of outside shaft, especially when you are using uh, inverters. And uh, let's look at the typical configuration. Uh, in most cases you have uh, this kind of solution so uh, you have uh, just linear actuators don't use uh, limit switches uh, I really advise you to use them because if you have even here uh, the, the, the limit switches built in, in, in the conf configuration in here me mechanically uh, these are pretty nice but uh, there are Zener diodes and they are generating problems so it's pretty bad it's better to use the limit switches if you don't want to use them uh, just use the configuration from the from inside of, of the controller uh, there's a parameter a limit and you can just put it three or two and this lets you to uh, let the device to to see if uh, the linear actuator is on the fin end position end-to-end -end position so it, it, the controller will decide okay you are just finished your movement and you can just stop right now right so use the configuration and then you can just reduce the the, 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 the cave link in here but anyway you should use external limit switches uh, in most cases no one is really thinking about the UPS or something like that but uh, in our configuration, you can just use the UPS, just pretty simple solution from the local PC computer, uh, and uh, found some kind of foul detector, power line foul detector. And if there is a storm coming and you are lost the connection to the to the power, then the UPS will let you to uh, flood the construction. To it will just. Uh, understand that okay I don't have a power I have to make sure that I'm flat I'm safe so I will use the battery here just to uh, to manage this motor to go 
solved or not depend on which uh, part of the world you are. So this is pretty simple and cheap solution and you can just easily make sure that your construction is safe. Uh, uh, I found some kind of uh, power line detector built in the power supply and the battery management but of course because of covid there is a lot of problem to to buy it so i'm sure that they will came back to the to the market but not for now um, anyway if we want to use brushless dc motors we can also do uh, can do it uh, this external uh, connector can manage the 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 the, the motors like like in here uh, the controller have to be managed uh, low uh, level uh, signal so we are just shorted to the ground in here and then the, the controller should understand that okay this is the signal to go left right or maybe uh, put the enabler on or off so easily you can use dc uh, brushless dc motors if you want to build something bigger and you want to use ac motors uh, three or single phase uh, we are using inverters. This is the example of the inverters. Of course, there's a lot of other solutions. Um, this is also uh, the same situation like in here. We are starting the movement shortaging the, 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 the direction. So this inverter understand the low signal side, not high signal side. It is of, of course possible to use it, uh, but you have to use some kind of uh, proxy device. I will show you on the, another slide. And uh, why uh, you have to use inverter, not just SSR uh, relays? Well, I have some kind of configuration here to show you. For example, in here, we are using uh, three phase uh, motor with the capacitor and then we can just change the the direction just switching between this and this uh, ssr and okay it's it might work but you can imagine that you don't have any security in here because the inverter lets you see if something going wrong with the with the motor if something going wrong with the line with the with the cablings and in here you don't have anything and of course you can just add some kind of uh, uh fuses but it's just cost generating and doesn't let you really control the situation so how many fuses do you have to use right now, right now right so if you want to use one or two three phase ac motor just use the inverters that's pretty simple and much more safer much safer and uh, what else of course you can just you know make some kind of mix using uh, for example soft north positioning uh, with dc motor and uh, ac motor as east west positioning it's really doesn't matter whatever you want you can do with our controller and uh, for example if you want to connect the the inverters where they are uh, starting having the plus signal positive signal then you have to use some kind of this device then uh, we are just translating the the uh, low to high uh, level signal and this is simple solution and of course you can use it you can if you want if you have this kind of device or maybe another device working the same way you can just use it and you can use this uh, this proxy device but uh, as you can see there's a more more cables and in reality this kind of inverter are much more expensive so this solution are cheaper and in reality better and uh, yeah this is another example when you can just uh, uh, use the the ac relays three phase relays and just you know switch motor left right and and here the same you have to use the the fuses and the other stuff so if you want to use ac motor just use inverters and uh, just at the end if you really want to use dc motor with a lot of amper then you can use external bridges in that example we are just using 
this is proxy device uh, accessible on eBay for ten dollars or something and uh, in here as you can see we are delivering PWM signals so we are able to control even that type of devices where the transistors need PWM signals to, to activate them so uh, as you can see uh, our controller can manage even that pretty complicated and solution right uh, what else uh, of course you can use external sensor like hello whatever you want to use uh, it's just a, a contact run from alarm system it's just a, a optical sensors or even whatever you want it just it, it's simply just you know delivering power and having the, the signal it mostly should be npm and that's all and of course if you have pnp solution you can just change the parameter and still working with it so i guess it's all for today as you can see, you can manage whatever you want with using our solar tracker controller uh, with very accurate positioning. Have fun.